do some news. And first up this week, Nissan apparently are coming back to motorsport. Back. Back to I didn't know they'd ever been in. Have Nissan ever been in motorsport? Yeah. What do you mean? Le Mans. Where's that? <laughs> Le Mans. Le Mans. <laughs> Did they win? You don't know. <laughs> anyway, they're coming back, not to Le Mans. They are, in fact, taking part in the Dakar rally using a pickup truck. We've got a picture of it here. But we're not particularly interested in the car. What we are interested in are the people who will be driving it. They're all completely gay-looking. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's the track. Now we needed someone who could tame it. So we got ourselves a professional racing driver who could post consistently fast lap times. We, um... We couldn't do that. Now, we call this thing the Stig, okay? We don't know its name. We really don't know its name. Uh, no one knows its name, and we don't want to know, because it's a racing driver, and racing drivers have tiny little brains, and therefore worthless opinions, and they're very dull. Doctors actually call it Mansell syndrome. Um, <laughs> How sad have you got to be that you need your car to wish you a happy birthday? I prefer to have friends. I don't know who <laughs> Uh, anyway, if you're one of those type of people who goes to work, collar on back to front, dress, whatever, you think you can drive, you think you could get around our test track more quickly than someone from another religion, get in touch. <laughs> no, that's a very that's a good idea. Excuse me, is, this is your Capri, isn't it? Yeah, you're, uh, you're wanted on the phone. Oh, it's yeah, it's just over there. Just, uh, okay, I'll go. Oh, <laughs> Do you think you actually can <laughs> Jeremy, you that's the man's <laughs> car! He's looking for the phone! Keep me. <laughs> Jeremy, stop it, that's dirty. It's also so not very nice to look at, actually. And this week, we are searching for Britain's fastest white van driver. We asked for applicants a few weeks ago on the show, and this is how many we got <laughs> on emails. Now, we weeded out the psychotics, and we were left with five. <laughs> However, technology might help us there. We may be able to deploy the bonnet, but it's a very difficult deploy thing to Deploy it? Do. Actually, deploy the bonnet, yes. How do you mean, deploy it? It actually lifts up as well, a pedestrian. you hit someone? Yes. Very That's difficult fantastic. to do. Very It'd be almost worth someone oh. running over. I'm going to run that person over. Whoa, how about that? Very sensible. It says here that as a safety measure, a safety measure, the rear doors, because it's got these, these rearwards oh. opening doors, mm. the rear doors can only be opened when the front doors are open. As a safety measure, which if you think mm. about it, mm -hmm. That's not a safety measure, that's a really nasty design fault. Because <laughs> it's shiny side down in a ditch, you want to open all the doors pretty quick. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> what I like is the optimism here, in the, in the press release it says, <laughs> it's talking about the engine, right, with a name derived from the word Genesis, derived from, so not similar, they've called it the Renesis. <laughs> <laughs> Start with A. Uh, Enesis, no. Benesis. <laughs> could have started with a P. Could have been bad, couldn't it? Oh, you're right. That close. How would this play? Is this good, do you think? You're a vegetarian. Get out! <laughs> he, he does not look like a vegetarian. This, what the hell are you doing at Top His Gardener's World? He's in Hampshire. I, think so I, was this. I was rooting for you and you got lost. <laughs> You were useless! <laughs> Most people did it in around about two minutes, two minutes ten. You took four minutes fifty-five! <laughs> this is the Audi. Now, it's got an aluminium skeleton onto which all the aluminium body panels are bolted. So you've got the weight of the skeleton and then the weight of the panels. Now, the Jaguar is more like a lobster. Okay? A lobster. A lobster. It's got an exoskeleton. What you see here, this is the structure. That's it. A lobster. Exactly. <laughs> you don't get it, do you? No. Do you get it? No. Yeah. 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 He gets it. You know exactly what I mean. That means it's light. It means you haven't got doubling up. It means that you're going to go, you have more speed, you'll have more economy, you'll be kinder to the environment. A lobster. Give it. We had a little bit of a look 
on the internet. You know your favourite place, Jeremy. Mm -hmm. Quite worried. This is a website. Now, it's called Out UK, and it's for the gay man. And it's, it's kind of a lifestyle thing. <laughs> it's got... <laughs> It's got everything you need for your gay lifestyle. It's got, you know, what to watch on television. There's a very if handsome man. If the SL manga. is in here, it's well, for sale. It, it does have, <laughs> it does have car stuff in here. And if we have a look down, look there. You see the auto erotic. Oh, aren't they lovely? There's a little smart. Yeah. And then we found the top ten gayest cars. And if you look at number four, which is quite near the top, really, that's that's the Mercedes <laughs> SL 55. <laughs> AMG. That's, that's your car. And do you know what's even more worrying is that the car I've just singled out for particular praise, the Jeep Wrangler's at number two. <laughs> is there anything you need to It's tell us not just point? the Onyx coffee table, it's not just the carpeted bathroom, I'm coming out. <laughs> It is exciting to drive, and I was really not expecting that. It's just such a shock, like discovering somebody really grey and average like John Major is a shagmeister. The Aston Martin I would put down into the uncool on, on the basis of build quality and it's not value for money, it's too much Ford. You are such an idiot. <laughs> This is the coolest car. Okay, it's set to 911 turbos, 90,000 pounds. This, the car you're looking at here, 11,750. <laughs> that was the least convincing noise I've ever heard in my life. Wow. Um, and it's not just our retire as well. Uh, we've rearranged the audience tonight. Um, we've got the good-looking ones here. This guy, look at him. Very, very fine. Well, this is a male model, really. Yeah. Yeah. You're staying there. You stay there, you get us a good image. And we've put the really ugly ones over there. At the mat. Right. Anyone with the spot. If you're this there guy now. here. Can you see this guy? Yeah. I, think, <laughs> I can't make my mind up whether he is Robin Asquith out of the window cleaner films yeah. or Keith Emerson out of Emerson Lake and Palmer. Kind of a hybrid. So if the floor manager, the guy with the microphone, comes up to you today and says, Can you move? It's because you're ugly. <laughs> Don't be hurt. Don't it's be just, hurt. Hey, You're ugly. It happened. The most amazing thing about that is a V10 diesel engine. Yeah. Oh, I've nodded off. <laughs> <laughs> I've just not said diesel. Oh. That'll be fun. Oh, wait a minute. You say the word diesel and my seat goes into recline mode. <laughs> <laughs> of the rebel base. <gasps> Sister, Obi-Wan was wise to hide this from me. In a house, very easy to commit suicide. If, yes, it is. Look at this, OK? It's working this one out. There's a button here to close the boot, because obviously you can't be bothered to do it yourself. So if you just put your neck down like that, <laughs> OK? Press the button and... Bye, Jeremy. It detects me and goes back up again. Jeremy, how did you find that out? I like to thoroughly road test a car. That is thorough, isn't it? You know, I don't Very like thorough. to just go for a bit of a drive around Germany. I like to get it tested. Trap your head. I was in America a couple of years ago filming at this tech place in Texas, which is the biggest car dealership in the world. The frontage is a mile long. And I said to the guy who owned it, what do you sell here? And he went, we sell a lot. And he mispronounced every single argument. Hyundai, Mitsubishi, <laughs> Toyota, <laughs> Nissan, Jaguar, <laughs> BMW. Every single one of them was wrong. Who was complaining about the Ford Ka? You were. Why were you complaining about the Ford Ka? It's just good. It, it, you, there's nothing you can say about it apart from, look at it, it's a good car. You've turned up with 86 earrings and you're telling us that's a brilliant car. <laughs> My case rests. Oh, he's looking angry. I mean, I like earrings, you know? I drive an SL, OK? I'm gay. <laughs> now, here's the thing with the stig at the wheel. Listen to the throbbing silence of that electric motor. Glorious. For comparison, we've lined it up against something equally sprightly. Jason. <laughs> And they're off! Now the thing can do 0 to 30 in 7 seconds. <laughs>
When we were putting this series together, we were looking for new presenters. God knows how we ended up with you, actually. But we were looking for a lot of new presenters. People send their tapes in, right? Now, this one is from a chap called Gaz, OK? Well, let's show you what Gaz's tape looked like. Hello, and welcome to Gaz on Motors. Today, we're going to be looking at instrumentation. Speedos in particular. You can tell this is oh, still going on. Because <laughs> apart from this one only has the odd meter. Whereas the Mini Cooper had both odd meter and trip. It actually has two spools mounted. And in the case, one here and one here. Gaz was heroically dull, wasn't he? So you see, you Beautiful. just got the job, but it was close. So you, Paul, better look grateful. Very grateful. No, no, look it. <laughs> more, gra more grateful than that to the Lotus people. Get, in fact, get Thank on you. your knees. Thank you. Get on your knee. <laughs> Thank you. Stomach, actually. Get on your stomach, on the floor. <laughs>